if I press this button, I pause this clip. So I queue it up. I'm currently at frame zero. And if I press, it starts playing back at one time speed. As you can see, I'm now able to replay in 10 times speed, which is great if I want to quickly go to the position and not use the, the jog wheel, I could do that as well. But now I am going back here, okay. So now I have mark in and mark out, I can go to the start. I can then, this is currently paused, it's queued up at the first frame and I can play this whole thing back right there. In this video, we'll look at Dream Chips Atom One SSM500 camera. This is a slow motion camera for high speed slow motion recording and playback and how Skyhoy controllers work with it. We do that on our new platform, the Blue Pill and Reactor platform, but we have a, an XD8 control panel and some Skyhoy RCPs today that we'll be looking at. So one of the main things that we'll focus on is the separate replay and RCP control. Separate, I mean two different people can do this working on the same camera. So that's the multi-master solution as well. We have multiple master controllers talking to the camera at the same time, enabled by Skyhoy technology. I also want to highlight that Dreamchip cameras have amazing features for color control, like the multi-matrix control. That would be for the RCP. Today we are mostly dealing with the XC8 workflow, that's what we'll demonstrate. But it's good to keep in mind that you have advanced and full RCP control from Skyhoy controllers with these amazing cameras. The lens control, this is a B4 lens, is also fully integrated in this workflow. And we'll talk a little bit about extension cables that we have developed for the blue pill. It provides simplified cabling, which is uh, also really great, but there are a few options that we'll highlight. And finally, if we look at the RCP, it's also worth mentioning that we have color presets in the RCP, so you can basically recall scene files in your Dreamchip cameras. Let's first take a look at the extension cable. This extension cable from Skyhoy is designed to work with the blue pill. You see how with the blue pill here, it fits into the blue pill and thereby extends its functionality. On the back side, you can now uh, turn these knobs and uh, fix the cable to the blue pill so that it doesn't detach itself. Um, and what comes out in the other end of this extension cable depends on your application. So you can order it in different shapes and sizes or different models. In this case, it does two things. It talks to the B4 lens and the Dreamchip camera. So it has a mini XLR plug right here, and it also has a B4 lens Hirosi 12 pin connector. So let's take a look at that one first. Basically, we have a B4 lens on the camera, and I can attach the extension cable to the B4 lens like that. So now I have lens control, and the mini XLR right here, same thing. It attaches to the mini XLR plug coming out of the camera. That's the simplified cabling workflow. With some Dreamchip cameras, it will even supply power to the camera. But that requires a different cable where we use the Hirose uh, uh, six pin, which is found on many Atom One mini cameras. Today, we will rather be using a standardized serial connector, uh, serial to ethernet converter workflow. So this connect, uh, converter is, is really basic, has an IP address, it's um, on the one side here connected to our network and on the other side it's connected to the Dreamchip camera communicating with RS485 signals. So that's our workflow for today, but the recommended workflow for also having lens control in order is the Blue Pill extension cable. I want to take a moment to talk about the Blue Pill platform. We have um, the Blue Pill as a physical hardware product here. And it's essentially a little server that talks to the camera and the panels like the RCP V2 and the XC8 will connect to the blue pill and the blue pill talks to the camera. So the multi-master functionality is achieved by having the blue pill being the master and other panels being slaves of that master. So you can add as many panels as you like. But there is also the option of buying RCP Pro. And RCP Pro has some really unique features apart from the race display and the Skyhoy developed joystick here with display on top. Please go check out our videos on that. We have lots of demonstration of the RCP Pro and it's an amazing controller. But RCP Pro has blue pill inside of it. So with RCP Pro, this can be the master. It has the blue pill technology built in so you don't need the external blue pill. So those are the two options, either RCP Pro 
or blue pill and another RCP like this RCP V2. Finally, it's time to look at replay control on the SSM500. This is the XD8 and this is Skyhoy's replay control surface. It has a T-bar for speed control, a jog shuttle wheel, we have buttons for mark in, out, reset marks, go to frames, we can stop, play, pause and also activate the T-bar. And now I want to show you how easy it is to start a recording, to play back a recording again and also to navigate it. So to do that I have arranged a few characters over here, Doctor Strange, The Punisher and Spider-Man. And they will fight wars against each other in a moment and we'll see who wins, okay? So now I press this button and it will start recording. So you'll see as I do, this display will start counting frames. Yeah, and now I have a chance for Doctor Strange to take his revenge on his comrades. And then I press this button to stop, okay? So now I have recorded 4,820 frames of this happening, all right? If I press this button, I pause this clip. So I queue it up. I'm currently at frame zero. And if I press, it starts playing back at one time speed. This is a good chance for me to show the T-bar. The T-bar doesn't control speed unless you hold down this button. And that's useful because as you can see, I'm now able to replay in 10 times speed, which is great if I want to quickly go to the position and not use the, the jog wheel, I could do that as well. But now I am going back here, okay. And so that was the T-bar, I could quickly ramp up to 10 times speed to go there. And now I can use oh, the jog wheel to take one frame at a time and see if do it's, it looks like Doctor Strange also dies in the process of this. Now, so that's my replay. What I want to do right away, because now we're here at the first frame, because we want to replay this amazing scene, I press the mark in button and immediately this frame is marked in. Okay, and then I can, let's see, he is dancing a little bit and there it stops. Oh, just go back right there, mark out, all right? So now I have mark in and mark out, I can go to the start. I can then, this is currently paused, it's queued up at the first frame and I can play this whole thing back right there. Actually, the camera is currently set to, to replay over and over again. And those of you who already know the camera know this is a feature of the camera that you have some looping functions that you can enable and disable. So let's just uh, stop the playback and now we're actually back to a live situation. So if uh, the Punisher would be kind enough to leave the scene, I'll just move in a glass here of soft drink. So without uh, any further, um, oh, I probably need to start recording. Okay, so, so what we'll do now is to record to the second buffer in the camera. It has four buffers and we'll get back to that. So now I'm recording and we'll be plunging Coca-Cola into this glass like that, all right? So I wanna show you another feature. As it's recording here, I can actually go start recording on a different buffer if I want to. Um, so I could now take the glass have a sip and put it back and stop recording if I wanted to. But actually as I'm recording, I can also play back this one and you're now seeing, no wait, let's play back the first one. So I'm actually still recording on buffer number three while I'm playing back buffer number one. This is an important feature actually, because the way you wanna use this camera in many cases would be that you record a snippet, you set in and out points and then you wanna play it back to your slow-mo system back in the OB truck to get it into that memory where it can be a part of a larger playlist. And uh, it's great that you can still record while you're playing back. So that's actually what you're seeing right now that we are playing back the clip here while still we are recording from the scene in front of us here. And that is happening cyclically. You can see the buffer has reached its max. So it is just recording over and over again into buffer number three while it is playing back over and over again buffer number one. So that was a lot of information in a short time. Let's just start, uh, stop the recording here. I'm, I'm pretty sure that recording is useless because nothing is happening in front of it. Um, we still have the second one here to go. And now that it's still playing back the first one, as you can see, if I press the second one, it will go play back that uh, buffer. And I can now use the T-bar here to fast forward to the moment where we uh, plunge some soft drink into the glass here. Okay, let's just go back. So I use the T-bar to do that. 
to a position where I am happy to use my my jog wheel. All right, once again, I want to set a margin point. Then I can use the T bar to to go forward here and see if I. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, mark out. So I can go to start, I can playback. So you see we have also for the currently active buff, I have playback, I can also pause and I can play again. So play and pause goes uh, hand in hand here. If I stop, I'm back to my live image. And uh, so that's the function of these keys. And as you see the go to start, I go back to the start here. So when I play this one back, I, I get it from, from the first frame. Okay, so what you have seen uh, me do here is to play back buffers, record to buffers, playing back while I'm recording, recording to a second buffer by simply pressing the next record button as I am uh, recording to uh, buffer number two earlier. I just pressed button number three to, to record into that buffer. So all these features the camera has is, is brought out on the controller in these toggle buttons, which is uh, really nice. I want to highlight how can you uh, change the settings for the looping or the go to end function. So if I press shift down, you see there's a lot of changes happening on the control. Let's just move the T-bar out of the way here. You see how useful this enable button is because the T-bar is not dangerous when it doesn't do anything until you press this one. So that's really nice. Uh, if I hold down shift, you see I have loop mode. I can change here. So recording wise, we can either loop or we can just record once to the end. We can also change the playback mode to one, so it will play from one end to the next, or we can loop. So these are the, the two things we can do. And finally, what happens when we stop? Will we go to the live image like we just did? Will we see black out or will we have color bars? So we can leave it on color bars here. And then as we have playback happening, and if I press stop, you see we go to color bars here. Now, I rather want to see slow-mo video. It looks so awesome. Now, okay, if I hold down shift, you also saw some other changes up here because you can now clear the buffers, all right? So you see that we have three buffers full of stuff and I can easily empty them by just pressing a button. So now I emptied buffer number three and I am ready to record buffer number three if I wanted to by just pressing the button. And now we are recording to this buffer once again and stopping. The final thing that I want to highlight for you, and let's just uh, stop the playback completely, is that you can also decide how many buffers, because if you need only one large buffer at a time, you press this key and now you kind of need to have enough fingers here because you see that it's indicating I have a buffer count of four, but I can change it to a single large buffer by pressing that button right there and then it will go to a single buffer. So ladies and gentlemen, that's the XC8 replay, how it can operate this SSM500 camera. And remember, it can do so at the same time you have an RCP operator changing and managing the colors of this amazing camera. If you want to study the details of this configuration on your own, there are links in the description of this video. So please go check those out and you can find so much more information about details that you care about. And of course, make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel and to our um, various social media channels because we publish lots of information all the time and it will keep you updated on the progress we do on Dreamship cameras and devices in broadcast and AV in general.